This is Eve Gleason. Oh, and we are being recorded at Calf Kicks After Dark, a new podcast we're throwing out. Me and my buddy, Gage, the Hambone Hamby. What's up? Not much, buddy. How's it going? Dude, doing great. What about yourself? Living life. You know how it do. You ready for 260 tomorrow? Still chance. Yes, I am ready for 260 tomorrow. And new! But we'll get to that later. Yeah, but I guess we will. I guess we will. All right, well, let's get into it. All let's right. Talk some fights. So we got Khabib's brother. I'm not going to attempt to say his fucking name because. It's What's crazy. his first name? You know that one? <laughs> I don't. It starts with an A. Because it's it. Let me see. Because it's in the prelims, right? Yeah. It's uh. I don't know why they didn't have him as the featured prelim. Like, you wouldn't think his name alone would be the featured prelim. I mean, I'm sitting here and looking up the guy's name. I can't – no disrespect to the Nirmaga Madoff family, but, like, I mean, I don't know the guy. I still can't find it. Maybe I got to look up Khabib's brother. <laughs> Talk about underprepared. We're going to get shit on right off the bat. Oh. Not Khabib's brother. We're probably casuals. Hey, spell Nemrega Medov. I dare you. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> not Stone. Magomed Nemagomedov is a wrestler back in Dagestan. Of course he's from Dagestan. Who is he fighting? No, that's not. Oh, <laughs> his eldest cousin. It's not his brother. And it's. Oh, man, this is a rough one. It starts with an A. Yeah. Abubakar. <laughs> Abubakar? That's, that's so, so bad. Sorry. I'm so sorry. That That's Bro. so fun. Okay, ready? You want me to spell it? A-B-U-B-A-K-A-R. And I promise when I hear him say it on TV tomorrow night, I'll never mess it up again. So, apologies. Mr. Nirmagomedov, sir, please don't try to hurt me if you ever happen to see this. They're going to come after us. They're not, those are the last people I want to be hunted down by. And like, okay. I'd rather, I honestly rather be shot than have Khabib or his brother and their style of fighting beat the shit out of me. Bro. Well, that's what I mean. Everybody makes fun of it and they say smash or they say maul and they make fun of him in the accent when it's like, no, that's what they do to people. Like, you, can, you can't imagine until it happens to you what having your legs wrapped and being held down and just having a 170-pound person laying on top of you has to feel like. like and not even that, just being held down and getting, like, there's nothing you can get. Like, they they created, they named a move after them. The Dagestani handcuff? Yeah, like, that, no, that's legit. That's fucking legit. That's and, legit. And, like, it's not the most exciting fight style. Wait, hold on, pause. Explain it. What's the Dagestani handcuff? All right. It's so when they're on top of each other, obviously they got their legs crossed underneath. Yeah. So they, they got their legs in place. But so all defending it, all you have is your hands to block your face and to try to get up somehow. What they do is they wrap your hand around their bo- around your body and grab the one hand that you have down on the mat to hold yourself up and like this. They just hold it, and they'll bring your ass down. So all you have is one free hand because they got their other hand on with all their body pressure, and they just go to town on your ass. And, like, literally, it's a crippling position almost, right? And the best – Yeah, especially because, like, they're not not hitting you either. Like, there's not not some – shit going on there yeah and i mean the whole time under the unified rules of mma like you have to be concerned about khabib has choked out how many people like you got to be concerned about khabib being able to take your back from that position and choke you out you have to be concerned about everything Absolutely. not just being I mean, not just being pinned down so you got you have four limbs you have both hands and arms and your feet they got your feet tied up And usually fighters, they have two hands to somehow, you know, massage their way out of 
any hold or, you know, half guard, full guard, whatever they're in, right? Yeah. But they got your feet tied up and they got one hand and you're on the ground and you all you have is one hand to defend. Well, being on the ground with one hand is nothing like being on top and having one hand, you know? It's, it's a lot harder to defend. I mean, like, absolutely. The way I describe it in another sports analogy is it's like baseball. It's the team that hits the singles. Just, they just keep hitting singles, 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 keep scoring. Keep I mean, scoring. yeah. And then by the end, like, you're like, I've only been through one inning. These guys haven't even hit a home run. And they won the ball game through run rule, right? Like, that's, I mean, that's everybody what I think. says it's boring. Everybody says it's no fun to watch because, like you're saying, there's no they're, – they're not knocking guys off their feet. But, like, I mean, Islam just choked the dude out. I mean, perfect. The same, I mean, that, the the grab, same, that's the Dagestani style. The grappling style, is man. awesome. That's the Dagestani style. I mean, it's dominant. It, it Like, I try to think of other sports analogies, but, like, it's just so – like, all right, you got people with power. You got Francis and Ganu whoever that got that one punch knockout power, right? All right. You can defend, yeah. you can defend against that. You can't really, I mean, it's very hard to defend against ground game when you're on the bottom, especially with somebody that's highly skilled like that. It's a lot uh, harder than defending boxing and kickboxing skills. So that's, uh, I mean, not to go in reverse. I mean, we're already a week late. We're in the next news cycle, but like, touching on Kevin Holland versus Brunson a little bit. I think Kevin Holland kind of went in there with the mindset of like, Brunson's going to wrestle me. Brunson's going to be heavier than me. Brunson's probably going to get me down. But I just knocked out Jacare off my back with one punch. I think he thought with his new jujitsu skills and his just being Kevin Holland and being a very fluid and creative fighter, I I think he thought he was going to win that fight off his back and like, not to shit on him. I mean, I really think there's only one guy that ever tried to win fights off his back and maybe had a little bit of success with it. Nick Diaz was very good off of his back. Gogo Plata, I learned that from him back in Pride. Or Pride, I believe. Something like that. One of the other one of the other promotions back in the back in the gap. He literally uses his shin up under the guy's neck from the bottom and chokes him out. With like a oh, three-way triangle. I forgot what that's called. Nick Diaz. Go-Go Plata. Oh, Go-Go Plata. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't Nick Diaz do that as well? Yeah. Uh, Nick Diaz is who I'm talking about. I mean, Kevin Holland definitely has the length and the flexibility we saw to do that kind of things. But by no means is he, you know. It's, it's with, just with not an effective belt, way to win fights by any means. It's just no, not. No, but with respect to whatever new jujitsu belt he is he's by no means an expert or you know an eddie bravo per se you know i i mean not to go even further backwards but i think izzy just got his purple belt and thought he might have had a little bit more success on the ground against blahovich and then he realized holy hell this guy's really strong like i'm not going to be able to move him and cause damage and create separation from the bottom like i need to do you know, another thing, I don't really want to get into the whole Kevin Holland thing with him jawing and whatever, but, like, to, you know, go to our point, being on your back, no matter how good you are, is a disadvantage position in an MMA. You know, it might not be in the jiu-jitsu world as much, yeah. but getting punched in the face versus, you know, just trying to be submitted versus, uh, against strikes, completely different ball game. You got to deal with the blows. Especially well, with the heavier so yeah, guys. You're, you're dealing with a guy that's really good, like John Jones, who will take you from the side, side mount you, and then knee you in the ribs. Like, that's not jujitsu at all, but that really hurts. Oh, yeah. That's I also, mean, like, a real good way to get loose points in a fight, to get hurt and not be able to defend yourself for much longer in a fight. And John's also not too bad at jujitsu himself, so that would uh, also be a way to get submitted in a fight. Another thing, talk you know, going off this whole Khabib's brother fighting and the Dagestan yeah, yeah. style. I love that we got here from that. Yeah. Um, so I was watching the the weigh-in press, com- not press conference, weigh-in show, whatever US, 
Yeah, the way she had today. Today. Uh, that they were playing on YouTube. It was uh, quite interesting that they had Khabib on there and he was on there for like 10 or 15 minutes or whatever. And yep. he's talking and they asked him, you know, all right, Khabib, you know, you came off your throne, came off on top and you retired for sure. Who do you see as the next UFC champion? And he goes, I know Chandler and Oliveira are fighting, you know, here pretty soon, but I guarantee you by the end of the year, Islam Machegov or whatever the hell his name is. Islam Maklachev. Maklachev, yeah. He said, by mark my word, by 2022, he'll be the lightweight champion. He's going to be everybody. Yeah. And, and I started thinking to myself, it's like the lightweight division is the most stacked division in any promotion mm. in, the, uh, in the world, in MMA, in the UFC. I don't see that guy losing to any of them. I really don't. I mean, as long as he has that style, the dom it's so dominant, they can't stop it. Look, I think at this point, he wants RDA. RDA wants him. I think that's – I mean, I, I'm not the fight guys. I'm not the one who makes it. I mean, props. I know it's complicated, whatever. Yeah. But RDA hasn't fought in a while. Islam and him have gone back and forth on social media recently. RDA issued the statement, I'll fight Islam, but if I beat your little brother, Khabib's got to come back and fight me. So I think that's a good bet. I think it's a cool deal because I think Islam can beat him. You know, no, no offense to RDA, the former champion of the world. RDA is awesome. And, you know, if he wins that fight, I think if the Dagestanis agree to the bet, Khabib's got to fight. But I don't see that happening. I don't see Khabib coming back to fight RDA. I don't either. But to the further of that point, Islam, the only reason they're not talking about him in that top, like that upper echelon of lightweights yet is because he hasn't beaten the name. He's looked very good. He's beaten everybody they put in front of him. But if they give him RDA and he beats the former champ of the world, you have to give him somebody like Tony Ferguson next. You, I mean, if they can't get Justin Gaethje booked, and Islam can win another fight between now and then, I don't see why you wouldn't put Khabib's little brother back in there with Justin Gaethje and let him try to redeem himself. Well, I, I think another thing, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think people are not trying to fight him either. I think from what I've heard is people are not, that's a fight that they don't want, especially if the top, you know, six guys. Like he's what, number 11 now or was? Like, they, they, that's a guy that they do not want to face. They know it, too. I, I got to shout out Uncle Bad Guy here, Mr. Chael P. Sonnen. I was listening to Chael earlier today. Uncle Chael. I don't – I think Chael was talking about 170 and about Chemaev and how nobody at 170 wants to fight. But uh, what he was saying is, like, who makes the rankings? The, they don't publish the name. Nobody knows who makes the rankings, which means it's like a volunteer job that somebody's probably not getting paid for, which, I mean, further, it was like, why do we care so much about the rankings? To connect back and circle to the point, nobody wants to fight Islam because he's like, what, the number 14, number 12? He's in the top 15, but barely. So you give him the number five guy in the world and you let the number five guy in the world get beat up by the number 12 or the number 14? Like, Guys don't want to fight him because they're squatting on their spots. They don't want to lose their spot in the ranking, which doesn't even matter. If you can if you can beat Makhlchev, you deserve to move up from five or four or three or wherever the hell you are. He's a I mean, he's a top of the division fighter. We we're acknowledging it. I, I know that uh Chandler's fighting Oliveira, you know, here coming up soon for the title. But like that like if Makhlchev comes out you know, beats whoever he beats next, RDA, maybe gets one more. I think that, like, I honestly feel like maybe Michael Chandler is the only dude that could combat Makhlachev, especially if he beats Oliveira. Like, that would be a I'm badass a, fight. I'm a big Charlie Olives fan. I think Oliveira versus Islam was the one I wanted to see. He, and then I was, wanted to see Gaethje versus Chandler and then put the belt on Poirier and McGregor. Yeah. Not so much because I care about Connor, but because, I mean, that's, I guess I can see it. That's, you know, you know, your red panty fight is Connor McGregor. It's like, 
you know, we're definitely going to make money there. So why not slap the belt on another pay-per-view and try to make double the money instead of, I mean, they, they knew they weren't going to, we just watched them fight in January and not that six months isn't enough time to change and make it a different fight and yada, yada, yada. We'll talk about that in May, but Poirier v. McGregor 3 does not do as good as Poirier v. McGregor 2, I don't think, at this point. And, I mean, maybe you throw a belt on it. I mean, we know that's not what they're doing, but I, I think, I think, I think it would have been cool, but we got we to move. We can't be sitting here. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah. my final thoughts on that is I think the perfect fight for Gaethje would be Dustin Poirier. I don't think that they're – I'd love to see them rematch. That would be I, a totally different fight than what it was. I don't think Connor versus Dustin three. I mean, it's going to get the pay per view buys because it's. Connor. I'm watching it. They can have my money. They'll probably build up a great card around it. They always do. Yeah. Anywho, so let's move on to the card. Let's get to the main event. Um, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So the first one we got Kamal Worthy versus Malarkey. Yeah, I mean, we got Malarkey, who is, you know, I think they're both former champions outside of the UFC. I know Malarkey fought um, Volkanovski in a Australian promotion, actually, and he got pieced up. He got knocked out, but he was yeah. undefeated. He was undefeated until he fought Volkanovski in this Australian promotion. Dude, I saw it, some crazy stuff. I didn't know Volkanovski used to fight at welterweight. Back in, I mean, back in the way back, he used to fight all the way up at 185. And you know what's even the, crazier than that? He used to play rugby professionally and played at 225. No, think about be, that, son. That, what like, do you, what do you think? He, I think we would have been, I think we would have been disappointed with our boy Ortega this weekend. I think Volkanovski was coming in ready to kill him. Dude, no, no bad blood or anything, obviously, no, but, like, no. I'm, I'm a big Volkanovski guy. If dude, you can beat Max. He's built like a brick shit house. Him. Built like a brick shit – dude, he is stacked. Yeah. he's. I mean, he's stout. Like, anyway. And, and then his opponent, Worthy. Dude, I watched some of his highlights earlier today. Dude hits, I mean, he fucking hits. Like, I'm talking, like, he has knockout power for sure, has a flying knee. I oh, mean, man, that would be great. I know we got some good knockouts, you know, in the past couple of weeks. Like, it was on the Leon card. Dan Ige got that big one. Uh-huh, Yanez got one this past week. Or, no, 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 it was Grant Dawson who had the one at 459 right before the yeah. bell. That one was dirty. He knocked the dude's mouthpiece out. What was it? Santos or Leanne? Something like that. But, uh, no, it would be great if we saw some knockouts this weekend. Well, I was thinking about this earlier. I, I know the big fights are the ones that would sell the pay-per-view, the main cards, the names. But I think for the casual fans, watching the undercards, the preliminaries, that's when you see the good shit. That's when you see all the yeah. knockouts, the ass beatings, the wars. You should you never you never even heard of this person. They yeah. come out, because they don't have they don't have anything to lose. Like that, that's no, my but, favorite. I love watching the undercards. No, and then once you progress past realizing the undercards are awesome, and you start watching Bellator, then you still that. Look, next thing you know, we'll be watching Glory Kickboxing or yeah. freaking 1FC. No, I am going to watch 1FC. My hometown native, Katy, Texas, Sage, Super Sage Northcutt's going to fight on TNT, I believe, in April. Yeah. Maybe in May, but he's in one now, and he's fighting some dude that's re – I mean, a legend. Let me, let me freaking look up his name. I feel like I should know this at this point. Yeah, but back to the Kamal Worthy. Dude's name is the his nickname is the Death Star. Oh, obviously, I, I, I mean, pretty cool nickname and all. But obviously, he hasn't watched many like, many Star Wars movies. Does he not realize this? The Death Star gets blown up in every fucking. Yeah, movie? the Death Star blows up. <laughs> I might, have, I might take cool the just based on that fact. I might be scared of the Death Star. 
But I'm with you. I think if I'm putting money on it, I'm going with the other guy because the Death Star blows up. <laughs> uh, you're looking up that name of who Sage is fighting? Yes, Shinya Aoki. He's a Japanese dude. But he's won, I mean, he's won everything in Asia. Did you see that fight last week? It was uh, Song versus Max Griffin. Kung Fu Boy got fucked up by the. I mean, talk about up. a knockout, like. Yeah, that was not. I was like, I was like, he's like, oh yeah, this guy's, you know, they're promoting it and shit. Yeah, this guy's a Kung Fu master, blah blah blah. You know, I'm Ooh, obviously exaggerating, but he got fucking. Max beat. Griffin looked good. Yeah, for sure. Who's the next fight on the card? Who we got on the main card? Uh, I think after I think it's only a four fight main uh, main card. I think yeah, because they pulled Bork- Volkanovski and Ortega. Yeah, and they, they got O'Malley him. versus uh, Thomas Maeda or uh, Almeida. Almeida. Thomas Almeida, yes. And uh, Almeida, you know, doesn't seem like that big of a name for Sean Mallet, even coming off a loss. But he's um, good though. Yeah, he's good. He's been plenty. I think he had some ridiculous record, like twenty and three or something. But he was he was the sugar show before the sugar show. Like the next young guy, they were like, he oh, was. he's gonna be a contender. He's gonna go straight to the top. Lost he got, a couple but fights. he's he's. I on think he got banged up. Or three out of four fights, kid. Uh, I'm not I sure. Think three in a row, he's lost. But I mean, he's fought the top of the top. That. I'm pretty sure he lost to Cody Garbrandt. I believe you're correct. Let's look it up. Cody Garbrandt, that dude, hey, he. I think he's the next real deal. Cody Cody Garbrandt versus Font is going to be legit. Oh, that's going to be a great fight. And I'm a big – look, I don't know if you've read into this or if you – there's a whole Joe Rogan sex, like segment on YouTube where they sit down and explain it. I've watched that podcast with him. Absolutely. Team Garbrandt and Faber and Team Alpha Male. I think TJ Dillashaw is going to look good. I'm going to root for Corey Sanhagen because fuck TJ Dillashaw. But I'm Team Alpha Male. Okay. I think Cody Garbrandt's the real deal, too. No, I think think, think Dillashaw versus versus Sanhagen is going to be great. I I 100% believe that. I'm going to root for Sanhagen, though. I, I I can't root for anybody because I like both those guys, even with Dillashaw with the EPO and all that shit. I like Dillashaw. Yeah, but, he lost he lost to Garbrandt and he lost to Rob Font. Thomas Almeida did. Yeah, all right. So he lost the top guys. So yeah. what do you think about this? I think O'Malley's gonna win. I'm sure you feel the same way. You know, I'll I'll, I'll be it. the only way I don't see him winning, his leg gives out on him again, and then I feel like he's done. I think that I've listened to him talk about it a bunch of times. And Me too. I think, like, I agree with what he's saying about how many times has it happened before it happened to him and how many times has it happened since. Absolutely. He's only got, like, three or four examples, maybe. So I think it was an accident, freak event. Probably could have gotten the fight stopped if he wasn't such a tough guy. But I don't think it's going to happen again, obviously. I don't think so either, but so, – I think I think Sugar Show is going to show us something, especially because right. like, you know, he's one of those guys that it's hard. But I think yeah. he's going to come in with some footwork Dude. and some. I think he's been working. His kickboxing is fucking amazing. He looks. He's such a good striker. I mean, we've yet to see him be put on the ground, and see how his ground game is, which I think might be a problem. We'll see how that goes tonight or tomorrow night. Well, I think I think he's really like I think he's. Not to take it as a joke, but I think he's genuinely in the mindset of he's undefeated to speak on the point of I think he's really pissed off that people actually think he lost that fight because his MMA skills weren't yeah, as good yeah. as Marlon. But he lost or but Cheeto like, Vera is not Marlon Marais, excuse me. Cheeto Vera was the one that happened to. All but, right. So uh, what do you what do you think about this? If O'Malley comes out and shows out like we are expecting him to do. How about like I was thinking about this? What an interesting fight it would be versus O'Malley versus the loser of Dillashaw versus Sanhagen. Mm-hmm. 
I'm, I'm saying like, I, I mean, maybe. I, I don't think it's out of the question. I think it would be a good fight numbers wise. And, you know, I, I don't, I think he's too low. I honestly, I think O'Malley's. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, Sean, I think Sugar Sean's going to have to make some moves. I think he's going to have to win a couple more fights before you put him up there. But like, I think he, I mean, personally, I think he's good enough to, to hang with those guys. Obviously, that'd be a different story if he didn't get injured in his last fight against Cheeto. Yeah, I think we might be talking about this a little bit differently. I agree. But uh, I think, you know, I he's electric, dude. There's no there's nothing other than to describe him as electric. I think if he wins, and particularly if he wins pretty decisively with a big old knockout, like I think he's going to end up pulling off somehow. I think you, and not to reference the rankings, fuck the rankings, but I think you got to give him somebody in the top 15. I think you got to give him a chance to at least, you know, I think the fighters are satisfied by it. And if you want to make, you got to, you got to, he's in, he's in the main card. Next, he's got to fight in the co-main event. And I think to fight in the co-main event, you're going to have to give him somebody with a number. And then after he beats somebody like that, then he ends up in like a 15 or a 12. You give him like a seven or an eight. You give him somebody that's a little bit higher up there. And if he gets beat, back to the drawing board. And you throw him back down, he goes back to the bottom of the main card. We're, we're, talk, we're also talking to somebody that's in their early 20s, if I'm not mistaken. He's, no, he's very young. He's super young. And he like, I'm going to go back to, again, dude on his, on his feet, uh, he is – about as good as it gets for that division. I mean, that's. I mean, he's, I a, think, he's like Max. He's big and tall and lanky for being a 135er. I don't think he's. He makes a lot of angles and he disadvantages for being, like, being bigger than people. I agree. I mean, I also think like him and Garbrandt, I think Garbrandt has more power. He's stockier. Oh, like, but that, that would be, would, that that would be, would be awesome. Roar. That'd be I pretty mean, awesome. They're not on the same level yet, rankings wise. I don't Dark think Nation it would happen, but like that'd be cool. I'd also Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo versus Dominic Cruz, the Legends fight at 135 would be really cool. I mean, obviously, I think both of them are passive primes. They're still good fighters and all. Well, I just all mean like stuff. I don't. This is gonna sound rude, but I don't want to see either of them get Frankie Edgar and get kneed in the face and put to sleep for a long time because you say. Oh, let's put him in there with some. Let's put him in there with Sean O'Malley and let Sean O'Malley punch his fucking lights out. It, I I also find it interesting in the UFC. They had these quote unquote gatekeepers. Like they're not. They don't come out and say that. But like the up and comers, like we saw last week, Derek Brunson versus Holland. You got you have these guys, and I feel like Aldo is becoming the new gatekeeper for these young guys. The, the yeah, UFC they, wants to see these young guys win and like that's why they give them to like these you know they're middle of the pack older guys that were once champions or once contenders but like you get a mile I'm, wait Aldo's not even a bantamweight is he or was yeah. he yes he I think you're so. right you're right because he fought Peter Piotr Jan you're right yeah I was at your house when that happened yeah so like that I mean Aldo's dropped a few he's still respectful fighter but he's He's nowhere prime, Aldo. Well, I think the big thing, and I think where it really comes to matter when you're looking at guys recently like Dos Santos and Overeem kind of getting, you know, they, I mean, they got cut, but not kind of. They got released from the organization, from the promotion. But yeah. I think the big difference between them and a guy like Jose Aldo or a guy like Tyron Woodley at this point is I think that Dos Santos and Overeem – were guys that were getting, you know, and Anderson Silva were guys that were getting hurt. Like, they were getting knocked out and knocked out pretty badly. And they were, you know, Dos Santos starting to get knocked out pretty quickly. Like, you know, I think those are big factors. I think if Jose Aldo, I think he just won a fight. I think he definitely still has plenty in the tank. He's younger than we give him credit for. Yeah, he, he like because 37. he champ so early, you know, and he had the dominant run for so long. No, but I think he's still got plenty of time. I think Woodley's still got a couple more fights. 
Hey, speak out Woodley. Let's get into Woodley right now. Let's talk about Tyron Woodley. So he's fighting Vicente Luque. Main Vicente Luque is good. Co-main. Uh, yeah, I guess it is the co-main. It's the second the one right before the, the big one, huh? Before yeah. I mean, if you look at it, Woodley, he lost the championship. Then he lost to Burns. And then yeah. he lost I mean, to, he lost uh, to Colby. Colby. All, the, I'm not mistaken, those are all top three guys, top three contenders. Yeah. No, and, I think. Like, I mean, he, he got knocked out, two of them, right? If I'm not mistaken, both of them, right? Yeah. Last two. I mean, yeah. those are top three guys, top three competitors. But how much does that take out of you? Like, you got miles. These fighters have miles on them. There's there's only so many beatings that you can take and so much momentum that you can lose. I know he's a big name, former champion. Used, he beat, you know, ruthless Rob, Robbie Lawler. But no, and that's the, the, the thing you got to note is Robbie Lawler's still around. And Tyron Woodley didn't beat him, like, when he was still around, air quotes. He beat him when he was in his prime. He beat Robbie Lawler when... When he was ruthless, when he was good, when he was champ of the world. But you got to think, it's like, how much left does he have in him? He, like, I'm going to put this out there. Like, we, we've heard reports. This might be it for Tyron Woodley. Like, honestly, he loses but, here. That's it, dude. He's getting cut. Like, former well, champion, out. I, I'd like to compare it kind of to Overeem situation where I think Tyron Woodley is recognizing, you know, I still have some gas left in the tank. I'm not 42, 43. I'm not in my 40s yet. I'm still 39. I'm on the cusp of it. He's getting Bro, there. That's pretty close. I'm just saying he's realizing this is his last run at it. This is his last. If he can string together, oh, let me let me beat Vicente Luque, then I'll go fight Wonder Boy. Let me go fight Wonder Boy, beat Wonder Boy again, because he already beat Wonder Boy. And then, I mean, those two respect the shit out of each other. I'd love to see that rematch. I don't think Wonder Boy wants to go in that direction because they're in a similar position. I but, agree, uh, but like, then he goes, yeah, look, he, he, he has, and to, he has to build back up. This is at least another year. And then no, I'm saying rematch that. either Burns, you know, Masvidal maybe, or, um, or Colby. Colby. And, and like, Leon. He, do you think that he he's going to turn himself around that much where he gets another title shot? I don't see that no, happening. but I think that's his goal, and I think right now I don't think Vicente Luque is going to be enough to stop him necessarily. I don't know if Vicente Luque will stop him. I no, think no, no, not stop him like that, but, I mean, I don't. I think he's going to win. I think he's refound his you motivation. Win? I don't think he's going to win. I, I think, think but, he's refound his motivation. I think Tyron Woodley – has convinced himself that this is his last shot for the belt. And in his mind, not to the to the fan probably, but like in his mind, he wants to rematch Usman, not for the belt. He doesn't care about the belt per se, but he says, I didn't fight as good as I wanted to. I really want that fight back. It's just one of those things. Every fighter's got one that they want to run yeah. back. And he wants Usman. So I think right now his goal is to get back to the top. And I think, I mean, he looks good. He looks like a brick house. He looks awesome for 170. I think he's going he to hit like a brick house hard. against Burns and against Colby and still got the dog shit beat out of him. I mean, no, I think I'm he's... Not, I don't think he even beats one of those guys in a rematch. First of all, I don't even think he gets a rematch nah. with Colby. I don't think he gets a match with Masvidal or Leon. I think Gilbert Burns is the only one that would even give him the time of day. And I think Gilbert Burns would probably hurt him. But if we're talking about... Specifically, Tyron Woodley versus Vicente Luque. I think Tyron Woodley's going to look good on Saturday. All right. What do you think of this best outcome for Woodley in the UFC? Because we're not, we know that he's not going to be a contender. I mean, most likely not going to be a contender. I, I think, it, I think with a has. win, hold on. I think with a win, he becomes a gatekeeper. That's the, that. That's the peak of where he's at now in his career. I, that personally, that's what I think. I, don't, I wouldn't even give him gatekeeper. I, just, I don't know how many fights he has left on his deal. If he has one, maybe he gets a couple more fights. They give him a little bit more money because he looked good if he wins this one. But if it's more like three or four, I think they let Tyron fight three or four more times, and they say, 
look, we're going to mutually, we're not going to cut you. We're just going to mutually agree to go separate ways. Tyron Woodley has eight more fights on his deal. Maybe they let him fight until he loses again. And then at that point, they're like, yo, dude, you got to go. I, I find it interesting, the whole, to circle back to this one last time, the, the whole gatekeeper thing. It, it's advantageous for the UFC because it gives up-and-comers a name. It gives them a name to beat, and they're like, oh, shit. That's the problem with the rankings is, like, nobody wants to fight you when you're too low in the rankings, and you have to beat someone, like you said, with a name to get yourself into the upper echelon of, let me call this guy out and have him actually respond. Like, my first time watching Israel Adesanya, I was like, oh, damn. Uh, this was when I was a casual fan. This I was like, oh, damn, he's fighting, um, what's his name? Brazilian. The Anderson middle Silva. Weight. Anderson Silva, yeah. yeah I was like, yeah, Anderson Silva's Spider. fighting? I was like, I was like, I- I'll tune in for that. Like, Anderson Silva is a badass. I didn't know much at the time. You know, wasn't a big fan, but I was like, Anderson Silva. Yeah, I know he's, he's a legend. He up on him. And I was like, this Adesanya guy's for real. He just... He dogged on Silva for, for a minute, dude. I was just like, okay. And that was I one think, of the ones, one of the good moments, though, where, like, I, I hated that for him because he felt so bad. At, like, Kevin Holland and Jacare at the end of last year, like, he felt so bad for doing it. He didn't want to. Yeah. But, I mean, it's all part of the game. That's what we all sign our name on. Well, that's what y'all all sign your names on the dotted line for. I like to keep my face. All right. So before we get into the main card and our thoughts, or main event, my bad. All right. Have you come up with any championship wars on UFC, you know, you know, pay-per-views that you've seen in the past two years? I, I know we Abs- talked to – Absolute wars. I think we got to go BMF first. I, I think – It's not over- a championship fight, though. I beg your pardon. It was five rounds and they gave a belt at the end of it. What do you call that? Hey, you and me can fight for the softest motherfucker in the world title and nobody will give us that respect. If it was in the UFC, if it was in the UFC under the undisputed rules of MMA and they pay-per-viewed it and Dana White promoted it and it was the softest motherfucker belt between me and you, people would watch it. People would watch it. People you would call, you would call that a championship belt Askren. about? You would call that a championship belt, though. I mean, no. Exactly. But, like, it's not the same thing. Okay. And, you know, okay, whatever. We're not going to – but, all right, let's maybe ask the question a different way. Main event wars. For me, the last one that we saw – was uh UFC on ABC one Holloway versus Cater that was pretty much a one-sided ass beating he, I'll give Calvin Cater all the credit in the world he stood in there in the pocket with him and that dude did not quit that dude I mean he's a, he's a big he's a northeastern guy he's a Boston guy and those dudes I mean they box they're tough as nails like yeah this, uh, dude had a cut like right here at the top of his head he's dripping blood down his face he looked tough as crap. I'm not going to say shit, even though I probably already said fuck. Figueredo <laughs> versus Moreno. War. Can't believe we haven't talked about that yet. That was a war. Which one? It? Figueredo versus Moreno in Dude, December. That, that was literally the last UFC card that I did not watch, and I kind of regret it. That was the majority not- draw, right? That was a that war? Was an awesome fight. Dude, if you haven't watched it, go back and rewatch that fight. I'll have to go back and rewatch that one. I think they're scheduled the rematches for June. June yeah, they have a rematch. No, they because it was so close, because it was so I mean Moreno actually like I didn't I didn't think he stood a chance. You know, they hyped up Figueredo big. But Moreno came in and like I think there were some elements in there that people don't touch on enough. You know, Figueredo was in a hospital the night before he had like food poisoning. He was like yeah. deathly fucking ill. The god of war. There, there was some sort of injury or something. He went straight to the emergency room after the fight. Like he was, he was in horrible shape. Yeah, hey, and the, he would have won a split decision. He would have won some sort. 
I believe it would have been a split decision if he hadn't kicked him in the nuts. He, he, there was a foul. Oh, that's why it was a majority draw? Because he kicked him in the nuts like three. He like poked him in the eyes once and kicked him in the nuts twice. Like there were like three illegal strikes, three strikes are out. So they took a point away from him in round three. Okay. It was like Moreno won two and four, and then they took a they they tied round three because they took a point away from Figueredo and Figueredo won one and five. All right, something like that. All right, before we war. all right, last last little point on this. Am I ooh, making this up? Felder v. Hooker war. A war. That was a war. Hey, am I making Felder this up? Felder v. Poirier war or Hooker v. Poirier, not Felder. But champion. All right, these are main main events, of course. But yeah, um, I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm just. What? Hey, is Faker Rado's nickname God of War? Am I, or I'm just making that up? No, it is. It, but they okay. say it in Portuguese or Spanish. One of the I mean, other. I think I it's believe Portuguese. Portuguese. Hey. I'm not gonna disrespect Brazil like that. I fuck with that red stripe in his head with the blonde hair. That shit's kind of live. I'm not gonna lie. That shit's kind of. That cool. dude hits hard. For 125, yeah. I think I think Henry Cejudo could figure him out if he could get back down to 125. That would be a fight. All right. Last little thing where we're gonna go off here. Final thoughts. We're gonna get to. It's time. Let's go. Stipe versus Francis, dude. Who you got? Who you got? Francis. I have gone back and forth a hundred times. I wish Francis would hit me the amount that I have sat here and thought about it. That's how painful this has been for me. But I fucking beg to differ. But, beg to differ. I would I would do anything not I'd face my worst fear before I take a any kind of shot from Francis. I just mean like I let him up or cut me in the gut. I'll go to the hospital for my lacerated spleen or fucked up kidney or whatever kind of damage he does. How about decapitated head? No, I'm not gonna let him punch me in the face. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I think I'm gonna go with my boy Francis. I think I'm gonna go with Ngadu. Are you going Francis decision, Francis knockout? Francis knockout. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go the opposite way here, dog. I'm thinking. I know. I, I'm just, dude, Stipe is the most slept on champion that there's ever been in the UFC in my mind. Like, especially with all he's done and all his victories and all his title defenses. Are you kidding me? I mean, he just doesn't get the respect. He, I read an article today. He said that they said uh, Stipe is the Cal Ripken Jr. of MMA. I was thinking to myself, I was like, that's kind of disrespectful. But then I was like, thinking, I was like, I mean, Kyle Ripken was solid analogy there. so long. He doesn't hold any of the major records, but for 20 plus years, Cal Ripken was. Cal you know, Ripken, I think, owns the most, owns the record for the most consecutive games played. Absolutely. Like uh, he doesn't, Cal Ripken wasn't the best. I mean, he was one of the best, but he wasn't the absolute best defense player. He wasn't the best hitter, wasn't the best home run guy. Same thing with Stipe. I mean, he is just all around the most complete heavyweight that we've seen, I think, today. I mean, he has wrestling. He has strength. He'll touch people up. People don't want to think about that, but he will touch dudes up. Well, that's the thing. And Stipe has done it in many fights. I mean, usually he gets finished. No disrespect to Mr. Miocis. Don't come to my house and try to have me go 25 minutes with you. I'd like to be but, friends with him. I think No, I just mean, friends. like. If he could, he's a very cool guy. From all the interviews I've heard, I would like to hang out with him. Maybe put out a fire or two. Help the city of Cleveland, Ohio. But Stipe definitely has that kind of style where he's not going to knock Francis out. He can get in and out, touch him up, take him down. Make, I'm not going to say that. In <laughs> Stipe's opinion, he thinks he can touch him up, take him down. And I think if it goes five rounds to decision... I can't imagine that Francis wins in a decision. I think Stipe is so way too technical. I think Stipe knows the game too well. And I think you can teach an old dog new tricks. So I think Stipe is going to have some shit under his sleeve that maybe not a bunch of it, but some shit that we're like, you know, he's still getting better for being the heavyweight champion of the world for as long as he's been and for being at his age. Well, I, I, I agree with that. Francis is the bigger guy. 
which normally you'd be like, oh, he should dominate him on the ground with giving up, what, 25, 30 pounds? But that's just not the way it is. Plus, you know, with all that muscle mass, you know, you think, oh, Francis, best looking athlete I've ever seen. That's not the case. You know, Stipe isn't chiseled out of granite the way Francis is. I don't know why, but Stipe just moves good. And I feel like that is the most underrated uh, attribute that any, you know, heavyweight contender can have. That not being all the way up to the limit, having the hardest hitting power, being the most rounded, the most, you know, he's probably, I'd say, who's more agile besides John Jones coming in? What heavyweight's more agile than Stipe? I mean, Cyril Gaon moves a lot, but like, I don't, I wouldn't say more agile. I think that would be a fun fight to watch. I think it would be a tech, like an image. I think it'd be a boring fight for a casual fan, but for people that enjoy MMA and the technical stuff in MMA, I think that would make for a very interesting matchup. What I also about- think Steepy, Steep, Steepy, Steep A versus Curtis Blades. I'd like to see them just wrestle. I don't want to see them MMA fight. I don't yeah. think Curtis Blades can beat him, but I'd like to see them just wrestle. I, I just, I guess, finishing up my point on this, I think even though Stipe might not look like it, had the most power, you know, had the build, whatever, I think he's the most fluid athlete in the heavyweight division. And I think that's what sets up. He's Fair. just, he's spectacularly unspectacular, if that makes any sense. No, fair. I mean, he's just so good in all the assets or assets of the game, you know? I mean, fair. Who, I honestly, like, dead ass, the, I think even better fight than this, I really hope Stipe wins. I feel like the next, you know, scheduled fight for Stipe, no matter what, should be John Jones. I feel like that would be the fight of all fights that'd be like, you know, these two heavyweights aren't going to get tired out. They might knock each other out, and they might just dog on each other the entire time. I feel like that'd be like, I think Stipe's, I guess what I'm trying to say is Stipe's kryptonite is probably going to be John Jones at heavyweight. I feel like that would be just fantastic. I don't know if he'd lose, but it'd be a damn good fight. They're, they're on the same level MMA-wise. Okay. Let me, let me think of how I want to string all of this together. But I think if you want me to explain my rationale for how and why I think Francis will win on Saturday. Go ahead. It's be a knockout, but I don't think like everybody's saying. I don't think he's going to be a first or a second. Punch his face off, typical Francis knockout by any means, because I think, like you said, I think Stipe is going to move. I think Stipe is going to go for the takedowns, and I think Stipe might get one or two. But I think Francis's wrestling defense is going to be a lot better. I think Francis, you know. I think Francis might even shoot. I think he might even try to get his own takedown. That would be yeah. interesting. I'd like to see that. But aside from all of this, my point is, we I mean, everybody, I don't know from personal experience, but everybody says that when you're trying to wrestle, like when you're doing that sort of stuff, when you're fighting like that, you're exerting all of your energy trying to lift this man up and put him down. Like you're exerting a lot of energy. So if they go out and try to grapple and Stipe is wrestling, I don't no disrespect to Stipe's cardio, and I think Stipe being lighter might help him in that aspect. But I think if Francis can come out in round one, we get up, and I, I think Francis, you know, he's been working with Teddy Atlas. He's been in the room with some really impressive boxing coaches and guys. I don't think he's going to come out and do this thing where he sticks his head out and slings the big overhand knock you. I think, it's, I think he's going to work the jab. I think he's going to have some technique and some footwork. I think he's going to throw some kicks. I think Francis is going to need to more or less play Stipe's game. He, Francis needs to stay off the ground, obviously, because we know how steep, dangerous Stipe is on top. We need. I mean, if Francis does get taken down, I think having Kamaru Usman in his corner is going to be huge because I think, you know, I think he's going to be me, able to hear him. Let me interject real quick. Go for it. So – I think you do make valid points, but I see the cardio side going the opposite way. Stipe showed us 
He he just had a trilogy with DC. The last one that won 25 minutes. No disrespect to DC by any means. No, no, hold on. Let me, let me DC say. is not the athlete that Francis is. No, by no means. By no means. What I'm saying is the amount of time in the ring recently that uh, Steve no, has I, had versus uh, Francis. I, I, I think, think cardio. Out, I think cardio outside the octagon is completely different. There are very few that have mastered the cardio outside where they're just bombs away all three, five rounds, whatever it might be. Francis has only been in the octagon in his last four fights, like two minutes and something seconds, like absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that, that's just crazy. But no, but they've been obsessive over this Stipe fight since he lost the first one. They, I mean, sure, the trainer sure. says, I, I think Francis will be ready, but to go back just a little bit, I think Stipe will be subject to being worn out in this fight because I think Stipe in the Cormier fight basically said, you know, I respect Daniel's wrestling. I don't want to grapple. I don't want to get him on the ground because he's really good on the ground. I think Stipe did a lot of good work in the clinch, getting him up on the cage, and that's how he wore out DC to where he could take him out. I think he doesn't respect Francis's wrestling enough right now. I think he's just, you know, going in with the mindset of, I mean, how you have to go in there against Ngannou, obviously. He's I'm just not going to get hit. Well, it's just, he's just another guy. He's not this big, scary badass that hits as hard as a car. He's just another guy. He's not going to kill me. I got to go in there and do my thing. You know what I'm I saying? I was throw over him about that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think I think Stipe's going to try to wrestle with Ngannou, and I think if Ngannou can basically keep himself off the ground and wear Stipe out, I could see him with his improved footwork technique particularly the boxing, not necessarily the kickboxing. I don't care about him throwing a bunch of kicks. I just want to see him work the jab and move his feet, move his head. Don't get – because Stipe's got power. We're not going to oh, sit yeah. here and pretend like Slump Stipe's up. fucking Slump pillow up. hands. Yeah. Like, Francis has got to move too. Francis can't get hit either. But well, uh, I think another interesting thing is we haven't seen Francis's knockout power outside of the first two rounds. I mean, no, it, I don't – I, I I can't recall, and it'd be especially interesting if we got to rounds three and four, and they were just it was just you know stand up, you know fight. I I don't know if Francis can throw that monstrous right hand or whatever. See, that's what I'm fighting. betting on. Look, if we're talking about going and playing, you know, shooting crabs, that's what I'm betting on. I'm betting that Francis's cardio is better than we expect. Francis has been obsessively concerned with beating Stipe Miocic for, you know, two and a half, three years. I think my money, if it were to go on anything, it would be Francis in the fourth. Francis in the fourth gets it done. My big prediction, my bold prediction here is, it's going to be the same thing that happened to Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury. Everyone's like, Oh, Deontay Wilder, one punch knockout. All he has to hit you is one time. What did what did Tyson Fury come out? He boxed his damn ears off, dog. He knocked him out. I'm coming out and saying, Stipe with the fucking knockout, and nobody's expecting that shit oh. early. Within the first three rounds, dog, he's going to show who the greatest of all time is at the heavyweight. So if you're going to parlay the main card, you want Sugar Show, Vicente Luque and Stipe Miocic. Yeah, sure. I'll take uh, Kamara Worthy too at the at the first fight. <laughs> I I, th- I think I'd go opposite with you on this top three. I think I'd take Sugar Show, Tyron Woodley, and new Francis Ngannou for the heavyweight champ. All right, we'll see, brother. We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's make up some questions and just go rapid fire real quick. Let's make up some shit and see if we can't go back and forth. All right. Um, Who wins Connor Poirier three? I doesn't on the street. Connor doesn't have that dog in him anymore. You got Poirier. I got Poirier. Like Jeremy Oliveira. Who wins that one? You don't want my boy Michael Chandler. Hey. Oh, All right, think, who, get, who gets Gaethje next? 
Who gets Gaethje next? I said it earlier. I would like to see Islam and RDA fight in July or August and then put Islam and Gaethje in the ring in like November, December. All right. Give me that time to recover from the trauma of the mauling and the smashing. All right, last one. Volkanovski v. Ortega when assuming they all get healthy. Who are you taking? Volkanovski. I'm taking the taking, the, taking the brick house. I think or I think Ortega looked awesome against Zombie. I think Ortega, Holloway, and Volkanovski are definitely the clear cut top of that division. Uh, but hey, I think Holloway v. v- uh, Volkanovski three. If you have to. Unless you unless you want Max to move up to 155 and Volkanovski to move up to 155 with him, you have to let him fight again. I would love to I'd him. be all in on that, my friend. That's what I mean. Let the new let the let the new class of 145ers come in and see if Volkanovski can't beat like Volkanovski v Michael Chandler at 155 would be an awesome fight. Let Holloway and Poirier fight again. Yeah, shit. All right. Yeah, we got to wrap up, though, huh? Yeah. Hey, leg kicks after dark? Let's go. Leg kicks after dark, bro. Let's go. All right. Good first show. Namaste, my friend. Herb Dean. Hey, let's get it, bro. I'll see you later. All right. Later, bro.